Welcome, welcome, hello. Welcome, I'm John Reed. I uh, do technical agile coaching. Um, it started as my sort of side gig as quality coding. It has now become a full-time job at Industrial Logic. I'm super excited to be working with them. Hello, Mud Shark. Welcome back. And yesterday, let's see if my overhead camera is still alive. If it's It cut out yesterday in the middle of some stuff. And there we go. Hello, my fingers. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, there is some stuff that I wrote that you didn't see. Oh, sharing Arlo's uh, Git notation uh, commit file. I did that. Hang on a second. Let's go here and look for this i shared this on twitter some folks have seen this but uh i'll just put this out here hello javier um and so this is the template i like as uh i don't know if garbob is here but uh uh, uh, Garbob had an interesting complaint or observation that here I am using this very nice notation that uh, describes uh, with a couple of characters what type of change it is and what the risk is and all that seems to be lost when I do TCR. That is true. Um, like if we look at, uh, my changes, because TCR is doing commits automatically, um, these all have the same message. You know, we have TCR high scores and TCR sanitizer. They all have the same message. Uh, that's kind of an interesting observation. Let's see what we have here. Uh, use a commit message from so one option is to work in a named change list and say okay I'm gonna work on this thing and then it would automatically pick up uh, the commit from from the change list name which I'm not using right now I'm simply using last commit uh, Another option that I thought of would be to use a, uh, a, a template name here and then write a script that goes through and changes them all uh, to describe what, what I did. Or, if you don't like so many small changes, but you could, you could rebase, I mean, you could squash them. But squashing, I'm I'm less inclined to squash commits these days. Why is that? It's because uh, these are by definition green, and hopefully any other changes I've made pre TCR. Wow, there are a lot of when I do TCR, the the number of commits just seems to explode. That's interesting. But even when I'm um, Hey, welcome Mystical Oracle from Poland. Glad you could join us. Um, it's the, looks like the usual gang here. Even when I do uh, my own, when I'm not doing TCR and I'm doing named commits, I'm working to keep each commit small and green. There is a notation for marking uh, things that, where'd you go? Let's see. Uh, if, if something is, is broken, you use one of these letters 
uppercase uh, and and do like star star. So it's like I'm working on a feature, but it, I haven't had a chance to check it, or I know it's broken. It may not even compile. Um, uh, then you do like F star star. Yeah, last. So these are the last hours of some free time next week. Oh no, I will not be street twitching daily next week. It'll be back to work. This has been a lot of fun though. Um, more fun than I expected. Partly for discovering, um, you know, just getting a chance to use stuff, for getting the uh, the chance to shake off, sort of kick the tires of the, the new tool I've been working on, approval tests, and then the chance to explore TCR has been a lot of fun. Uh, and so I've grown, I've learned, I thank you for participating with me. Strangely, because I was twitching, uh, streaming every day, I actually got uh, affiliate status. So you can now, in the chat, do other things? Like, I don't know what this does. Um, I've added some, started to add some custom emotes. Uh, they don't show up until they're approved. But, um, and I think you, you get a, some sort of score here. Hopefully that makes it more fun for you. I'm not going to make money off of Twitch. <laughs> there ain't no way. But, but my hope is that by, um, signing up to be an affiliate, uh, since I streamed enough, um, unlocking these things, I hope makes the experience more fun for you. You can give it a try or not. All right. But, um, so that's, uh, let's see if I'm still live. Okay. So that is Arlo's notation file. Uh, something down here that I drew yesterday, but you didn't get to see was my illustration of what parallel change uh, the parallel change technique looks like in refactoring. It was, here's an old thing, let's lay down the new thing, let's shift things over, sort of one at a time, to use the new thing, and then get rid of the old thing. Some people call this uh, expand, shift, contract. At Industrial Logic, uh, our, the founder of Industry Logic, uh, Josh, Joshua Kiriyevsky, came up with the name Parallel Change, and he found this cool image. This is from uh, our training. Uh, on, and this image here, can I zoom in? There we go. This image is a local image of the... Uh, one of the many bridges in the San Francisco Bay. And you can see there's an old bridge and they're making a new one. So what do you do? How do you like keep, how do you not have downtime essentially? How do you keep things green, but still allow work to progress? And the answer is you lay down the, the new thing, but keep traffic going on the old thing. And then, uh, once the new thing is ready, switch over one at a time. Or maybe, if, if you can, in a, in a bold uh, global replace, shift everything to the new thing. Keep, yeah, they branched it, exactly. Um, uh, and then, shift over all, uh, all the callers until there's no traffic on the old bridge, and then you can delete the old bridge. There you go. So that is what we call parallel change. It is one of the refactoring strategies, techniques, um, that we teach at Industrial Logic. All right. Well, I think the overhead cam broke when you opened the terminal to show the git commit template. 
Hmm. At least at that time. I keep waving my fingers. Oh, I'm not showing the camera now. Doesn't matter. All right. But, um, sort of a reminder of where we were. We're working on the sanitizer. And next on the list will be pretty printing. Sanitizer is where we are. So let's, uh, let's get back to it. And in fact, I have, I kind of like the pattern of setting a message when I start working on something and then letting TCR take care of it, basically rename that the first time and then, uh, and then not have to worry about commit messages. Yeah, I don't get all the descriptions, but it should all be green. So, hmm. And this is where we were. We have these tests running. I'm, we moved the, this test over and sort of reshaped it from wasn't here, from here. Mm, I'll leave this here for now, but I think we'll get rid of it eventually. Let's proceed with, with this one, because what I want to do is fix the problem of our pesky, uh, smart quotes or curly quotes, curly apostrophes. I think there were quotations also was the Unicode regex problem. And the, we also have, uh, this is just gross. This is where we were. This is, this is gross code. Let's see if we can't uh, start by pulling this out as a property. And that, did that break anything? No. Now I'll run tests and we'll see. If it works, it, it's not complaining about, um, you know, the IDE isn't warning me about uh, things it detects pre-build. Pre First time today, look, it takes a little time to sort of wake up the system, looks like. Bear with me. All right, so that should be okay with a TCR commit moments ago. Good, because now every place this regex is used, I want to, I want to clean this up so that I can fix it in one place instead of fixing it in three places. So what happens? We get the input. Can I pull this into a method called um, uh, skip skip quotes or or what did it do with it? Ah. Strip quoted text, strip quoted answer. And let's make this, this is kind of a, a change in my naming habits lately, is sort of gotten used to having uh, external names on everything, but that doesn't always make sense. 
In fact, I'm finding more and more that I'm liking having, especially if there's just one argument and it's pretty clear what it is. Uh, to have a, an anonymous, have it be unnamed externally. Right, so let's check this. Hopefully this will start to go a little faster. Yeah, I've got some um, really ugly code. Uh, we had to do some replacement in approval tests itself to um, because there's this idea called scrubbers. One of the features of approval tests is... is uh do i have a description of it i don't think i have a good description of it yet but when when you're you have text sometimes that text is sensitive and you don't want it to be part of the test like a date the current date or any date and uh, so approval test has this idea called scrubbers that says, oh, I, didn't, I, I apply this regex and I see that it is, is shaped in the form of an ISO date. I'm going to call it date one. And that makes the, the approval then insensitive to, to dates. And the code to do that was really gross. Anyway this went so i can start um cleaning this up this do doesn't need to have a separate variable so we have strip quoted answer one um, I mean, I, it's kind of weird, but I just want to do this three times. Yeah, it's weird to have to do that. But I believe that this will let me get rid of three and return two. Find out. Which means I should be able to do it a third time. And finally do that. Hopefully this will make it easier to fix the bug. That's sort of what all this is about. All right. Now let's get to our tests. What do we want? We want something with, um, well, We can mess this up. Should ignore commas. That seems okay. Uh, let's duplicate this and say should handle curly apostrophe. And let's start simple. John's apostrophe. I predict, because I, I, I'm used to typing curly quotes, um, because that's how I like it in, in WordPress. I'm using a plugin that doesn't curl them for me automatically. It just looks better, but that's it, as opposed to 
the straight quote, right? The straight apostrophe, curly apostrophe. And this, I think, will not work. I think it will die. And because I have, let's double check, TCR set not to revert test files, this won't go away. But I think it will fail. Yep. It fails. So now we can get to work. Um, Mudshark, you had a suggestion yesterday about looking for... Uh, actually, we still don't really know quite what's happening with UTF-8 conversion. It's here, right? The length of, of the bytes in UTF-8 doesn't match... Uh, was longer than the, than, uh, the actual text. So, string length. So here in the regex, you're selecting U0022, like that. All right. Um, let me see, let me just quickly disable this, the new one, and let's see if the old one passes. Keep the backslash. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't need those. Let me make sure. So uh, the other day I was like, oh, does uh, approvals only um, uh, when it's being, bringing up, when it's using app code to show the diff, um, does it only show one? And the answer was no, it shows them, but in like multiple windows and because I have of how I had the windows arranged, it was... Uh, the main IDE was overriding the diff output. So let's make sure I close them all. Uh, in fact, I don't... Now let's re keep running all tests. Okay. So keep the backslash, but go U022. U0022. Where? I can't type. That looks, uh, it's giving me a warning here. Expected hexadecimal code in braces, in braces. All right, let's see, especially if this is still disabled, what happens? It's an experiment. Okay, it took that. Now let's see what happens here. Not quite. Still the same... same issue. So I have an idea for a cheat, and that is, uh, rather than add the ending quote to, all right, I'll, I'll give it a try. We will see what happens. We'll see if this gets reverted. Okay. So, yeah, nuts. Um, one way to dance around the problem, it's not like, 
a thorough solution, but it's a good enough for me, for my input solution, is to sanitize, um, have another uh, step in here. And that, to replace, let's try this. Let me, let me just set this back. Yeah, let's try that. Replace occurrences. In fact, maybe I can do it here. Replacing occurrences of something with something. Will this work? It took it. Okay. Again, it makes my uh, nose wrinkle a little bit. On the other hand, I don't feel a need to have super bulletproof, can handle any Unicode uh, in my text um, when I know what my input is. And it's not going to, like, the, this is sufficient. Uh, let's, let's do start pulling things out, though. If this is, um, either that or maybe, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering how to format this. A uh, strip coded answer returns a string, takes a string and returns a string. Any thoughts on uh, better formatting um, rather than having like call inside of a call? I wish it were chained. Um, Do, do, do. I don't think I'm going to get chaining without having creating a new type or creating an extension on string, though. So maybe this is okay. Let's go on to more tests, more problems. Oh, we've got some duplicate code. In fact, I'm actually not concerned about all the problems and the desires here. Let's see if I can't strip these out. So step one, I want to simplify the test uh, to show what it's testing. If I get rid of the features, then this will become like that. Let me get rid of. I'm not sure if I like this yet. What happened? Let's look at the weighted entry tests. Yeah, I'm not really liking this a whole lot. 
in some ways I feel like it would be clearer with um, the approval test. You know, it's all the commas that are throwing me off. Um, but, all right, let's see what the error is. I get rid of that free form. I didn't look closely at it. Oh, okay. It's 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 picking up this. Hmm. How's this for us? It's not, it's still not ideal, but I think it's a little bit better not to have all the stuff when I'm really focusing on this apostrophe right here. All right, now let's, um, we've got some, let's pull out the sanitizer, the system under test. Whoop. And let me move in smaller steps. All right. Do setup. And Tear down. And then get rid of these just to refine the test code. Then let's sanitize some more. Handle curly open quote. See if I get this right as open and close. And what I want, yeah, I still want uh, this result. Okay, there's our problem. I'm just going to do the gross thing. I'm going to duplicate this.
Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to replace it with uh, um, an actual quote, quote, because then I'm afraid that's going to mess up the stripping of quotes. And it worked. Do I like this? No, I don't like it. This, what do I want to call this? Um, something like, uh, not Unicode, not using Unicode. There, that, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? So yeah, Javier, what's your question? I've begun reading the refactoring text you recommended by Martin Fowler, and there seems to be a preference for things that seem to contradict the readability of good code. A good example of this would be let good var name equals foo dot a. Uh, the book suggests um, Function, function name, param, good var name. The book suggests simply calling the function like this. Can you point me to like a specific place in the book? Um, then I can, I think, I think I know what I want to say, but I, I want to be clear about this. Hang on, let me go get my book too. Instead of assigning to a variable, it just passes in the function directly. Um, you mean He's saying, don't use a variable. Uh, there, there, are, there are things called explaining variables. Do, 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 do. Extract function. Well, that's interesting. For uh, comments, I'm looking at the, um, okay, page 21 toward the bottom. I'm assuming you have the new text. So I'm not Martin, but I'll be bold and speak not on his behalf, but on my behalf and say, um, uh, he passes in total amount instead of assigning it like let a equals total amount. And here I would say that the function name is clear, that it doesn't need an explaining variable. Um, the reason to extract uh, here, here I wanted to extract this variable uh, for two reasons. One, it was just getting so long that it's no longer being formatted nicely. And I wanted to improve the formatting. And in the process, um, the, the variable name adds documentation. That's in, in Fowler's example, the function name total amount is a, it's within it's, it's his code. So it's within his domain. It's expressing domain, a domain idea. What is the total amount? What we have here is not a domain idea. Um, that is input replacing occurrences of with replacing occurrences of with. That is not a domain idea. That is calling straight to Swift um, Swift string. So, you know, if 
if I, I could extract a function or a method that did this, then I wouldn't have to have an explaining variable. I could just pass in uh, the call to the function. I hope that, that makes it clear. So the difference is, um, when you look at the function name, is it domain? Is it, talk, is it talking in terms of your domain? If so, you don't need to uh, uh, comment it. Um, or is it talking to lower level infrastructure? If so, naming might be, uh, it, it might be better to extract variables or functions that add naming to express what is this for? Why do you have this? Hope that helps. For those of you who don't already have the book. Ooh. That makes sense. I tend to be more verbose in my code, but I notice not just in this text, some things that make it a bit more difficult to read the code. Yeah, okay. So I think that's the difference you're seeing. So good. I hope that helps. What do we got here? All right. Um, Mystical Oracle, I asked you, uh, let, me, let me share what, what we're talking about here. So in the limited WIP plugin, we are using the, the TCR part. That is not the only part, uh, the only sort of section it has. There's also auto revert which is, uh, gives you a timer, you know, commit, commit, commit. Oh, you didn't commit. I'm just going to wipe out your, what you did. And then there is this, the change size watchdog. And I was curious about this because I didn't know what this was. And let's see what, uh, Jeff to say, I wanted to share my experience with the limited whip plugin, not too much, but having a notification that encourages me to save progress is a huge step forward. So that's cool. So let's see. If you enable it and it detects how many lines have changed, let me just see what the options are here. Notification interval? Not sure what that is. Is that like how long between the, la the last notification? Show remaining changes. Exclude some files. I'm going to turn that off here. Um, I'm rather far from TDD. That's okay. It's a journey. It's a, it's a good journey. Um, but uh, now fixing broken tests using app code, and this makes it nice. That's good. But the key promoter is totally awesome. That is the, this, uh, other plug in here, key promoter. I learned yesterday a few keyboard shortcuts in just a few tries. From yesterday, I only once got back to Xcode because uh, a server side Swift code introduced some error and was not sure if this is an app code bug. Excellent. I'm glad to hear um, you're finding your path. You know, that's one thing. As, as coaches, we come in with our experience from, uh, of what we have seen work and not work in different situations, but you can't, we can't just say to an individual or to a team, do this because it needs to be them trying and deciding for themselves. They're in their context. They're with their, their code. Um, their team, their background. And so I'm glad to hear that you're finding your own way of exploring app code um, to see how it helps you and where, where the edges are. You saw me slip into an edge yesterday and decide that uh, um, where I was like, you know, I'm just going to make this Xcode change. And then I think it was Mudshark said, oh, you could just do this with this context menu. So cool. 
Uh, I have notification every five minutes when I have more than 80 lines changed. Nice. And total amount was used in multiple locations, if I remember correctly. I haven't looked at that example in a while. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad this is helpful. It's fun for me. Uh, the interaction especially is a lot of fun. All right. Let's do one more. I'm not liking the repetition of this. Um, let's, instead of curly open quotes, let's do curly quotes. Like this. And let me get it right. That's not it. There we go. That's the curly close, close quote, which should now be, well, this will now fail. Right? But we should be able to do this by duplicating that and changing it to a close quote. Now this is a lot of stuff in for one variable. Do I want it to say to do I want a I'm trying to decide. You could extract a function that takes an array of characters to replace. Now we're talking. Let's do that. Let's see. Let me um, maybe start with one. Let's move in small steps and see where we get. I'm not sure how to, I'm, I'm trying to imagine how would I get there with uh, automated refactoring, but maybe we can try. But I don't think this is going to extract like that now. Placing occurrences does have a character set, as I remember. You can probably pass a set of quote characters to get rid of them in one go. Wait, replacing occurrences of is a NS string? Let me pull up the yep, other documentation here. Okay, it's a string protocol. All occurrences of a target string. I don't know. Let's go to the string protocol and take a look around. Trimming returns a new string by removing from both ends of the both ends. So that's that's not the same. Replacing characters in range with replacement. Not seeing that. Maybe maybe you'll find it. Um, Let's continue without and let's move in small steps now let me let me eh. let's try private funk um this is gonna take this is gonna be like uh strip multi-byte unicode something like that i'm not sure what they mean by range it's a good question
Let's take a, what, an array of strings? Two strip. I'm just making up a, uh, Just making this up as prototype. And here's where TCR has started to affect me, is before, I probably wouldn't have done this commit. I'd be like, well, I'm still working on it. But now that uh, I'm in TCR, I want to do the smallest change. If I say input, replacing occurrences of, oh, what are these? Target with replacement, target replacement options, target replacement options range. Uh, replace characters, let a character set equal the thing. Self Components separated by characters in set. Join. Oh boy. That's a lot of stuff. I wish I could pass the keyboard off to you right now. Um, that would be interesting. But so that I don't get lost, I want to try to keep moving in my steps here. Um, Let me do this. Let's extract this. Oh, nice. By extracting it, it added it as a return. Oh, I should have made that a var because now I want to change it. Um, because I want to say for Uh, let's move smaller. I want to take two strip first, and I'll go ahead and put a bang on that and say replace occurrences of. that Let's, um things are moving around fast here what i want to see is if i can just call this with one thing before going to many things Thank you. Like that. What? Like that. Thank you. What I want to see is, can I call this with this?
and just trying to just trying to move small here that still feels like big steps that I was doing but um so far so good can I add this one again this is kind of weird to have um an array of strings rather than parsing a single string oh wait let me first change this to iterate over everything so it works with the first character let's now say for strip in to strip two strip for each let's try it you're going to take me straight into functional coding and that's good I want to say result equals Hang on. Hang on a second. If I say the result is equal to the input and I want to return the result replacing occurrences, again, trying to move small. So now I should be able to say result is equal to placing occurrences of that and then return the result that should still work for the one and now if I take this and slap it in here cool and now i should be able to do one more like that could this work better as um extensions on string mm, maybe a private extent can you do a private extension the th the thing i'm i don't like doing with uh, extensions on types that i don't own is adding a bunch of functionality to string that's not actually in string it's like that's my thing all right uh what else do we want to do here this still looks funny to call strip quoted answer three times in a row let's rename x to um back to say not unicode You know, this is looking better. It's still, in its own way, gross, but it is better. And that's the thing with um, that I find as sort of an overarching goal with, with fast feedback, is that we're not trying to get to perfection. The thing with making all these commits and making them small and keeping them green is that at any time... I should be able to put this if this were a shared project i should be able to push this directly to the main branch and use trunk based development um and and just keep going to a, a single branch even with a pull request i should be able 
to like take everything I have and 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 even though it's not done done, it's an improvement and commit that improvement into a pull request and say, I made progress. Is it done? No. But is it blocking anybody? No. You know, is it break going to break anything? No. All right. Um, I think that does the sanitizer, but I think that does our time today. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve day. One more day. These things, this whole thing, I, I've, I've teased out and said, you know, gosh, uh, I feel like we're, we're almost done. We're so close. Um, but I was getting impatient, kind of like, I don't know, like the boss at work who was asking, is it done yet? Um, and that's not the point. If I wanted to just m make this code on my own, I could have done it. Uh, more quickly could uh well i could have done it more quickly by not waiting for uh to stream it live i could just have coded on it in my free time whenever that was especially at at night when it's um not convenient my night is not convenient for you to watch but that is not the point tomorrow uh this has been a chance for to explore various topics and and do so together um sorry you won't be able to join tomorrow um but uh i figure folks will be busy on new year's day oh yeah new year's eve that will be your nighttime you're gonna be hey, 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 hey. you're gonna be partying absolutely you know maybe i'll skip tomorrow Maybe I'll see you on New Year's Day when you come in with uh, maybe your hangover and uh, the, or the kids are just uh, dragging themselves along because they, they were up late or whatever it is. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. No, I don't want to interfere with, with your New Year's Eve celebrations because this has been a crap year. Better, though better than the year before i am praying that next year will be maybe it'll still be crap but maybe it will be a little bit better kind of like the code be satisfied with small improvements and take them and commit them okay let's call this a good session i will not stream tomorrow i will see you in the new year Yep. May next year be a TDD year for us all. Take care, everyone. Stop streaming. Oh, uh, and quick reminder for folks who are watching the recording. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the things. You know what to do. Take care.